Mr. President, the image I'm putting up right now beside me is the cover of Time magazine in June 2014, the first issue in June, June the 2nd, 2014. Uh, according to the corresponding feature story, the baby on this cover uh, Emmeline Aubrey Randolph was born prematurely at 29 weeks uh, into the pregnancy. She weighed two pounds and 10 ounces. The legislation we're actually talking about today, unlike the legislation I just heard described, which we may very well talk about later, the, election, the legislation we're talking about today and we'll vote on tomorrow uh, takes us back only a few weeks before this cover story baby uh, was born in, in, uh, in, at 29 weeks uh, to 20 weeks of conce after conception. Uh, we know of lots of cases after 20 weeks where uh, we've seen babies survive that early birth. In 2010, Frida Mangold was born at 21 weeks and five days into her mother's pregnancy. She both had complications, the baby was born, but after intensive care, she was able to go home. In Florida in 2006, uh, Amelia Taylor was delivered by an emergency C-section when she was 21 weeks and six days in, her pre in that pregnancy. She received medical care and survived. In Iowa in 2012, Micah Pickering, was born prematurely at 22 weeks and one day. Uh, Micah and her family are actually here visiting with the Senate tomorrow. Uh, Micah just turned three this past July and she'll be meeting with members of the Senate to talk about and to be the example that her parents will be talking about of what happened with a baby that was born 22 weeks and one day into the pregnancy. And in my state last year in Missouri, we know of a remarkable story where the Cowan family in Kansas City welcomed their twin sons into the world 39 days apart. Uh, and little Carl was so small that his mother, Elaney, could put her, her wedding ring over his wrist when he was born. Tw at 24 weeks and one day, he weighed barely a pound. Twins are often small anyway. And he was a twin and that point in the pregnancy. 39 day, days later, his twin brother David came into the world uh, and Carl is busy catching up with David in his size as things go on. In St. Louis, um, Andrew Kanopka was born at 23 weeks. Andrew weighed a pound and a half. He was born at Mercy Hospital there and today he's eight years old, doing well. His family lives in Webster Groves. Also in St. Louis last year, Zeke Miller was born at 27 weeks on December the 10th, 2014. He weighed two pounds and 15 ounces. Zeke was in the hospital 111 days, but he's now nine months old. And just last week, his parents were excited to hear that Zeke no longer needs to be on oxygen. He's passed another milestone. Across the state line in Overland Park, Kansas, at the Overland Park Medical Center, babies born as early as 23 weeks of pregnancy uh, are receiving care in the neonatal intensive care unit. Uh, their neonatal unit has been featured for its emphasis on what it calls kangaroo care, because in kangaroo care, the baby's parents come and have that skin-to-skin, -skin, parent to baby contact so that the baby knows for sure that there's somebody out there ready to take care of it. I, I recognize there's no national consensus on the issue of <coughs> that we're talking about or even the issue on the early months of pregnancy. However, the overwhelming majority of Americans know that at this stage, 20 weeks, they're not talking about a clump of cells, they're talking about a baby. The baby has 10 fingers and 10 toes. It has unique fingerprints that nobody has ever had and nobody will ever have again. It has a beating heart, uh, and thanks to advanced ultrasound technology, this is about the time when people find out whether they're the parents of a little boy or the parents of a little girl. Now, the fact that the baby is 20, at 20 weeks is a baby 
is obvious to the larger, larger culture. In fact, this, this cover story on Time Magazine, no advocate as a rule for outlandishly conservative social structure. Uh, Time Magazine tells stories of young babies fighting for their lives and doctors who are fighting to save them. Let me quote from the article. It says, quote, fragile babies being looked after by a round-the-clock SWAT team of nutritionists, pharmacologists, gastroenterologists, ophthalmologists, pulmonary specialists, surgeons, and it concludes, that was the end of that quote, it concludes in, with another quote, in some way the work of the NICU will always seem like an exercise in disproportion, an army of people and a mountain of infrastructure caring for a pound of life but it's a proportion that speaks very well of us, end quote. That's not me saying it's a proportion that speaks very well of us. It's Time Magazine. The value of our, that our society places on little one and two pound premature babies in the neonatal intensive care unit is remarkable and speaks well for us according to Time. So many of us have uh, experienced now or have friends, in fact, my guess would be, as members of the Senate go do hospital visits, nothing is more riveting than that moment that you sometimes get to spend in the neonatal unit with a baby that's so little you don't know how it survived, but it is, and you know that with the technology we have today, that baby is very likely to go home. Uh, when anyone in your family is healthy, Mr. Speaker, uh, you have a lot of problems. When somebody in your family is sick, you have one problem. And one thing that's no more focusing in the case of these families and these babies uh, than what they're about to do right then, which is everything they can do to save a life that has all it takes to survive, but it just needs some help. So while the culture is embracing the value of these lives, these little lives that can survive on one hand, uh, our laws really don't reflect that science has made that almost an indisputable argument. We know that babies born 20 weeks after conception can survive, uh, but down the road in Maryland, a doctor says he'll end a human life at 28 weeks. That's about seven months into a pregnancy. Several states in the District of Columbia allow uh, life to be ended with an abortion in the ninth month of pregnancy. Uh, can anyone really on either side of this debate d defend that? Uh, if they can't, really you should favor this fairly easy to achieve view of this issue. There are only seven countries in the world, including ours, that allow this to happen, these lives to be ended after 20 weeks. These babies can feel pain, as I've just talked about, they have are very, very quickly are gonna have the ability to survive with some help. And by the way, the seven countries include China, North Korea, Vietnam, and the United States of America. Not a list that I think we wanna be on. And so shortly my colleagues and I will get it, will be able to cast a vote on the Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act. Mr. Be Mr. President, I'd just like to close by saying a baby is a baby and science tell us they can feel pain. This bill's a common sense idea. It's broadly supported. I hope that the Senate will take a step to protect these lives.